It's like Christians now who have the Holy Spirit, but he doesn't fill them. So when Christ comes again, it'll be a surprise to them. Whoa, I weren't ex wasn't expecting. If you're filled with the Lord and he shows up, you just smile. I'm so glad. I heard the story of the first hour of a, of a man's mother-in-law, I believe it was, who when the doctor said she was older, you've got cancer, he, she jumped up and hugged him because he said you don't have long to live. And he just hugged her and says, I'm so ready to go. Well, I think her, her heart was full of oil. She was walking with the Lord. You can't have somebody else provide for that. That's something that you, that you have. Therefore, when God says five minutes, when Jesus says be ready, point three, the prudent prepare, what's that last word? Now. The prudent prepare now. When were the five ready? Before the announcement came. They were ready before midnight, before they fell asleep. When were the five foolish not ready? Before midnight, before they heard they were, they were not ready way before everything. When did the Slither Gadi victim get eaten? Before he got eaten, when he was arrogant. When you're around a Slither Gadi and you're arrogant, you don't finish your sentence. When did the caped superheroes seal their fate? When they put the cape on. With arrogance, they thought, oh, you know, I'm invincible. There's nothing going to happen to me. No, that was foolish arrogance, which blinds, which leads to harm. So the prudent prepare now because, here it is, readiness is a lifestyle. It's not like you got 30 seconds to get ready for Jesus. Oh, man, I don't think I have enough time to... Pre <laughs> no, it's, you're just ready. It's a lifestyle. You live ready. Paul says about his race, I love this, that it's not win at the finish line. You can't run slow for a lifetime and then sprint the last 30 minutes. No, the race is won sometimes well before the finish line. I love to watch Paul's progression. In 1 Corinthians, one of his early letters, he talks about running in such a way to win the prize. Even himself, he says, I want to win the prize. He's not talking about going to heaven. He's about, I think, talking about rewards and about being a part of the feast. Then in Philippians, he says, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me. As we read his last letter, and even though he has a while to live, it's his last letter, 2 Timothy 3, or 2 Timothy is the letter, chapter 4, says this, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. He's not dead yet, but he has run so long that he's finished it. I've kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the, read those three words, crown of righteousness. And who gets it? Which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have, by their lives, I believe, long for his appearing. He'll say, come on in, wait or run. But readiness is a lifestyle. It's sort of like you can't get mature in 30 seconds. Whoa, was I supposed to be mature? Okay, hang on. Okay. You can't sprint to the end of the finish line when character is on the line. Or faithfulness. How long does it take to be faithful? Oh, a good hour. No, it takes a lifetime, and that's what Jesus is saying. In fact, we could summarize it this way, point B, when he comes, be caught with oil. 